All right, what's going on, guys? Trap back again, here to bring you another video. This one will be doing our last review for the first half of Fear of the Walking Dead Season 6 because this is now for the mid-season finale, Episode 7, Damage from the Inside. All right, and spoiler the warning if you guys have not seen this mid-season finale yet for Fear of the Walking Dead Season 6. Okay, so yes, this is the mid-season finale. If you're not aware, uh, Episode 8 was not completed before the, uh, the shutdown from this year. I thought it was. They said that they had just finished production or something, but um, this one is listed as the mid-season finale. So maybe we'll see that episode, you know, next half, next year when we see Fear of the Walking Dead return. Maybe they'll have to scrap it or something. We'll have to see what, uh, you know, what happens with that. But basically, this one, it sounds like it's the last one they were able to complete before the lockdowns happened, uh, you know, earlier this year. So this this will serve as the mid-season finale. And it was a really good episode, I want to say. At least I enjoyed it quite a bit. Um, you had, you know, a few different, uh, maybe, I want to say, what, three different sections to the episode. We have the beginning parts where you have um, Dakota going missing and uh, Strand is calling for Alicia to go and find her because uh, Strand, uh, you know, would think that uh, Alicia and Charlie would have a better chance of bringing Dakota back because if they're able to get in contact with her, um, you know, Dakota kind of looks up to them, you know, they're... Um you know, they're all girls and stuff, so it kind of makes it uh, <laughs> work better. And if uh, Strand tries to kind of go in and get her back, Dakota may not be as opt or as willing to uh, to go back uh, with him, considering she doesn't like uh, Virginia. And she does say in this episode that Virginia killed her parents. So we don't know if that was, you know, uh, killed them maybe prior to them becoming walkers or if they had been bitten or something like this and then she had killed them. It wasn't really... Uh, expanded upon much in this episode, but, uh, you know, based on what we know of Virginia, you wouldn't put it past her to maybe kill her or her parents if she disagrees with them or something. You know, she is kind of crazy in that, and now she's missing the uh, the hand, which is uh, <laughs> cool, as we can see, um, you know, later on in this episode when Strand returns. So we have uh, the setup for that, and then we have the uh, Ed is his name, and he's basically like a Dr. Frankenstein type of character that we got to see in the uh, the trailers or the preview uh, videos for this episode in that he has been taking walkers, and he has been um, kind of souping them up, or he has been kind of, um, you know, I don't know what you want to say, putting uh, antlers and putting different things like this on them or in them. Uh, I think there was one that we saw kind of uh, attack uh, Alicia that was it, did he take its eyes out? Was it blind or something? Um, you know, just, just some different kind of uh, crazy stuff or maybe one eye or something, I don't know. <laughs> but you, you think too, like, uh, you know, maybe having a blind zombie or a zombie that can't see could, could kind of mess you up because maybe you're used to killing zombies, them coming for you in a in a zombie orderly fashion because they can see you so they're coming right for you. And if you had one where he, t he popped its eyes out or something or replaced it with something, maybe it would be like lumbering and falling all over the place or something and it could be, it just would be different from the usual protocol. So if it went to attack somebody and it was like all over the place or whatever and didn't know what was going on and going at different angles and stuff, it could just throw the person off and they could end up being bitten, especially if it was, if it was teamed with another one or something. And then some other ones that had like, um, antlers like coming up through the chest and things like this or on the head or whatever i think there was was there even like a one with like it looked like it had like demon <laughs> demon horns on it or something uh so he's creating all this stuff and uh you know you get kind of a horror feel with that especially in parts when so alicia goes in because she's looking for dakota and we do end up seeing afterwards that dakota is there but she kind of goes in and sees him doing experiments on one walker that was one of the pioneers we can tell based on its uniform it's got kind of the key and stuff like that and so uh then you have him kind of sneaks up behind her and sticks sticks a needle in her and uh kind of uh, you know uh, is it a tranquilizer or something like this and she passes out so uh it was pretty exciting stuff you know had that kind of horror uh feel to it when she wakes up and she's using the antlers to kind of uh, uh take off the tape and that kind of thing and then we find out that charlie had kind of snuck in so she was kind of hiding and yeah this whole thing kind of going on um so it was pretty scary it was cool stuff and um 
you know, I liked Ed because he was just really different from anything we have seen before. What did he say? That uh, is, uh, did he say his dad was a taxidermist or something like this? I don't know, so, something like that, or that he had been basically, um, you know, I guess can we say as a hobby, he had been bringing them in. Now he did say that by kind of souping them up, the idea was to keep other people away. So if Virginia and her rangers came kind of close to where he was, these souped up walkers would attack them, maybe kill them, or at least make it so that they don't want to come any closer because there's all these these uh, crazy, uh, you know, uh, walkers around. And we did see one before that had, was it razor blades on its uh, on its fingers? One of the ones with uh, June in the, uh, the episode with with, uh, Lucy and the uh, uh, Tank Town, I think they called it, which has now gone down. But um, so it was a cool kind of angle. It was certainly something different. And I thought that Ed was kind of a cool character uh, for them to kind of have to kind of get away from sort of a mad scientist type of uh, character. So it was kind of fun and everything. And, um, you know, so we see all the walkers. So he kind of, as part of his craziness, I guess, I don't know what he, he makes all the walkers come in or something. You know, you get questions of whether or not he'll let them leave, if he'll want to keep them there because he's lonely or something like this. I don't know. Uh, but, you know, one of these types of uh, one of these types of things. So you have all the walkers come in from the speakers that he has hooked up here. And uh, maybe as, again, a defense mechanism because uh, he does have a gun, but maybe he doesn't have the same kind of firepower that the uh, rangers would have with all their different types of guns and, uh, and, and horses and everything. So this is a way that he's found to survive is by souping up the walkers and and using them maybe as a defense mechanism with speakers and all this other uh, stuff around to just cause enough, not to beat Virginia or beat the pioneers, but just uh, set up a defensive system using the walkers to where if they came in range, he would be able to cause enough of a ruckus so that they would leave and be like, oh, screw this. This is crazy. What the hell's going on here? Uh, so, uh, you know, that was all fun stuff. I liked it. So then we had that uh, Alicia had called Virginia to make a deal with her that she would give Dakota over in order for their freedom, which we know from what we've seen that Virginia typically doesn't do that and that wouldn't work. So we kind of get the sense that even though she's brokered this deal with her, it's not a good idea because there's no way um, Virginia will let her do that. I, I can't see uh, if we think back to, uh, you know, John and, and what happened with him before. Um, she's not going to just let them let them walk away and, uh, and leave. And even at the end, she kind of says, too, that uh, she wants everybody back that they uh, got from the uh, the Gulch. So she wants absolutely all of them back, uh, all of them, every single person. So she had said we also saw at the end of the episode, which was a pretty cool reveal that she does have Grace and she knows how uh, dangerous Morgan is. So she has set up Grace in a spot where basically no one will even know she's there. She's sort of hidden. She's kind of imprisoned. She's pregnant and everything like this. So, um, and she's kind of she's kind of kept as a uh, maybe a, a secret weapon or a bargaining chip in that she knows how dangerous Morgan is, and so uh, if Morgan uh, you know tries anything or whatever, she can say, "Well, I've got Grace. I know where she is. You'll never find her unless you do what I say." So she's got that leverage piece there that she'll probably use at some point later on here with Morgan. And uh, then we have Morgan who now has Dakota, so they sort of have an equivalency for each other. Um, as we have Morgan and the group sort of starting to kind of rebuild themselves and get back together. Uh, we know that John left, but we don't know if John had run into the others yet. Definitely Morgan would want to get him back on their side, um, just because of his, uh, you know, his ability to fight and everything and his accuracy and everything. You want to have him on your side if things break down with, with Virginia here, which, well, it's basically war at this point, as Morgan was revealed to have killed the convoy. So um, he's going to want to find John, I would think, uh, as part of this whole thing. So lots of cool stuff happening. They kind of, uh, Morgan comes in to help sort of save the day. Uh, now they might have been able to get out anyway, maybe. Uh, it looked like some of the walkers either might not have uh, noticed them or just they were busy chowing down on Ed. So somehow here they might have gotten out of, out of that window or out of the side exit there that he had boarded up and maybe gotten gotten out of there anyway. But Morgan comes in, he saves the uh, he saves the day, sort of, and you have a nice scene with a uh, reuniting between Morgan and Alicia, and then you have kind of a question of, will they be able to see eye to eye? And it doesn't seem like it, but in a way, you have basically Morgan, who's grown a little bit cold and tired of the situation, but you have Alicia, who wants to protect Dakota, in that um, 
She doesn't want to broker, use her as leverage to broker a deal. She's kind of, uh, you know, protecting her sort of in, in some way here along with, uh, along with Charlie. So kind of the leader of this, this, this trio. Um, so you have that. And then a very, a very awesome scene, I want to say, at the end when Strand kind of comes in because we're always questioning whose side he's on. Uh, but we do know that because of Madison before and everything in their history, that Strand is going to be loyal to Alicia regardless. I would even say, even if it cost him his own skin at this point, I get the sense that he would uh, sacrifice himself at this point to save Alicia, to save Madison's daughter, in sort of a, uh, a tribute to, to Madison one way or another. He's always going to take her side. He's always going to do what's necessary to protect her. Uh, and he does. So in this episode, even when there's kind of a standoff between him and uh, and Morgan, um, he decides to stay in the middle, let them leave. But then he also goes back and does tell Virginia the truth that uh, this is what's going on. She's with him. And so Virginia does know that she has some serious uh, opposition now. She's losing numbers. She's lost Tank Town. And so uh, she's lost John, which is probably her best uh, fighter in terms of accuracy. Granted, she probably never really had him in terms of allegiance anyway. But, um, you know, if somehow she could have used June to keep John in line, you'd want to have John on your, your side definitely because he's probably, he's, a, he's a, maybe a, a 10 person. He's a one-man army, right? If you give him a few guns, he can come out there Western style and he'll be able to take down a bunch of people. So she's got her work cut out for her now. She's, it feels like she's starting to lose control, um, but she's got her ace, uh, ace up her sleeve. She's got Grace as well. So she knows even though the, um, the numbers are starting to look a bit more respectable from Morgan and uh, kind of the old school uh, fear group that we've had, you know, since about season four or so, we want to say, um, kind of the crossed over fear group, right? Uh, Strand sort of is on her side, but even she knows not really, um, not if it came between Virginia and, uh, and Alicia. So uh, it was an awesome episode, really enjoyed it, thought that the, uh, you know, some of the standoff scenes were really good. Uh, between uh, Morgan and Alicia, even though you kind of felt like, you know, can't go that way, and it didn't, right? It can't go away where they actually, you know, uh, uh, fist comes to cuff between them or comes to blows between them. You know, you wouldn't see that happening. But for a second there, it felt like it was a bit intense, some good intensity, but then really good intensity when Strand shows up and you kind of have uh, Strand and Morgan and sort of a, uh, a protectionary, possibly... Uh, you know, for Alicia, who's going to be sort of, you know, a, kind of a, a rivalry there between them of, of maybe strands. No, we're better off, you know, with uh, enemies close or, or keep your friends close, enemies close. So we're better off right next to Virginia with Strand or, you know, Morgan's kind of approach of ah, that's not going to work. We're going to take her down. And who will Alicia and who will the, uh, the trio kind of uh, go with at that point? And they go with Morgan, and Strand is uh, sees conviction, sees that she really wants to do that. So he's willing to even risk his own skin by allowing her to do so. So I thought it was an awesome episode. Uh, it actually works out perfectly as a mid-season finale because it leaves us right at a point where we have a really nice kind of cliffhanger type of ending. Uh, it was an amazing first half, even though it was one episode short. It was only seven episodes. It was amazing and uh, really enjoyed it. So in terms of score for this episode, can I say it's the best episode of this of this uh, half so far? I think so. Um, it was great to see the reuniting. It was great to see the uh, whose side is strand out, what's going to happen here. And I thought it sort of had a pretty happy ending for everybody, but also uh, kind of a, a nice cliffhanger ending in that Morgan has Dakota, but Virginia has Grace. So it's kind of a nice a nice play off of each other there. So I'm going to give it a 10 out of 10. I, I love the episode. thought it was amazing. Best episode for Fear in a while. And uh, maybe it's sort of like, it makes me think like it's one of the episodes that we probably should have seen with uh, the original Walking Dead when they had All Out War and that kind of stuff was going on. It's maybe even better, I want to say, than a lot of the stuff they did with the Saviors, Dwight, in between, and all that stuff that was going on. So that's it for this review, guys. I may see you back again soon for a live stream tonight. If you like the video, please thumb it up below. You can share, you can favorite, you can subscribe at the bottom left if you're, if you're new. That's it for this one. See you guys again soon for another video. As always, this is Trev, and I'm saying peace later, guys. See you soon.